Hello everyone, Dr. Judy WTF, welcome to the show. And tonight's topic is damsels in distress, a narcissist dream. Do you out there know people who are just perpetual rescuers? And they like it because we're gonna find out t tonight why it's so tempting, especially for people who tend to be more on the narcissistic spectrum to select people who are in distress. When I say damsels, of course, I don't necessarily mean only women. This could be a man in distress as well. So uh, this, again, is going to be based on reasons why mind mapped, we're going to mind map this, reasons why people choose who they choose and i think we have a call in already okay hello 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 this is dr judy you're on the couch with dr judy and i guess this might be a hot topic because i barely spoke and you called so who is this please uh this is michael is it is it like a group call it's not. It's not a group call. You're you're on, and uh, what what attracted you to this topic, and what precipitated the call in? Uh, sure. So um, I've been, you know, kind of observing more intelligently um, a relationship with my mom, and we've gone through a tumultuous time after being very close uh, throughout our lives, and it, it kind of determined it was kind of like a covert. Uh, emotional incest type of thing and we kind of had a falling apart and this family therapy over the past couple of months but okay so i um, just want to remind you uh the topic okay the topic is right, so damsels in distress so uh this could also be your mother in distress and your people pleasing need to rescue her is that relating to you uh i'm relating that because i've realized that i have gotten into a romantic relationship with a girlfriend that falls under that category so okay okay i appreciate that and and i just stay on the line because i want to explain to people the mind map so as we're talking about this michael and we're de deconstructing it i want people to have a framework and a lens through which they can see this and the lens through which I like to talk through, of course, is the Be the Cause mind map, a system I created to heal human disconnect. And very simply put, it is a system based on childhood wounds and how they encode in us, how they break us down, how we get into horrible patterns like choosing uh, people that don't really serve us, and ultimately how we ruin our lives because of it. And then, of course, the system is focused on morphing people out of it so that they can heal, repattern, and pick more wisely. So tell me what you have gone through and uh, who you have chosen, and we'll, we'll get into it. Um, so someone who, uh, of course, I, I love her very dearly, okay. um, and we're in, in therapy together to work on our, our relationship. She comes from a, a past of a mother who was an alcoholic, and okay. her, uh, her uh, parents divorced at five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think due to the fact, well, I, I know because she's dove into this also, mm -hmm. that the emotional neglect that she had uh, and her needs not being met, um, it, it, that along with, you know, all the different things that life brings, uh, okay. I'm observing a lot of narcissistic qualities in her, and uh, she's developed um, a lifestyle where she's very needy of other people to support her, and she doesn't... Um, uh, yeah, you know, she's bouncing between jobs, between houses. She lives with me, um, but it, it, it's a, a, a okay. financially one-sided uh, relationship. Understood, but, uh, understood. And uh, uh, sometimes people bring to the table other things other than money, and um, I talk about this a, a lot, right? And, and, and as long as the relationship is synergistic, whereby uh, you're bringing it, she's bringing it, and together you're creating something more than who you would be separately. So tell me a little bit about, first tell me if that, that's what you feel is the case. Are you better off without or is she better yeah. off with, with, without or with her? 
Right. I, I put a lot of thought into that, and I, and I think I'm better off with her. And okay. I, I appreciate the thing that she does bring to the table. Something I battle within myself uh, is – and I really feel like it's kind of like a societal norm that I've just, you know, we've all kind of maybe been raised with. Like, mm-hmm. You know, you kind of have to work your own way and pay your own way. Okay. But I feel like that's like a norm that's not necessarily true to my heart. And she she relies on other people for different things. Her dad still pays like her cell phone bill and her, her car insurance. You know, little things like that, I think, kind of like get to me. And I feel like it would be more mentally healthy for her mm-hmm. to have a little bit more independence and autonomy. Okay. How old? How so old I, are you, and how old is she? I'm 38, and she's 35. Okay, where are you calling from? I always like to know where you're calling from. Um, I am calling from Phoenix, but I live in San Diego. I'm not here on a work trip. Okay. Uh, all right. And you're from San Diego. Okay. Right. So the point is, is that these configurations sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work, and um, I want to tell you nine reasons why men fall fall for damsels in distress damsels in distress where they come out not so well or the woman comes out not so well and the relationship is lopsided so um i'll just go through them and i can talk more about it but i want to know if you relate to any of these and if the audience relates to any of, of these aspects so Um, specifically men who think that the women who treat them like men are more in distress because as a result of being in distress, you feel like you're treated more like a man. So by needing your help, it makes you feel more like a man. Is that the case in your case? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about the fact that they're easily approachable? Because, of course, if somebody is in a desperate situation, well, they welcome people to walk up to them and say, hey, what can I do for you? They're not going to be as standoffish, and their boundaries are going to be down. What about that idea? Uh, yeah, I think there is probably some comfort or some like level of um, you know, security or even like a shade of like dominance, yes. um, in a sense, that is comforting. Okay, so what about uh, the idea that the damsel in distress is very easy to please? All you have to do is a little for her, and she's greatly appreciative. And who doesn't want to be appreciated? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's in there too. She's a, she's kind of um, she's kind of div- I wouldn't call her like easy to to please necessarily. Okay, um, so that probably doesn't apply as much. Uh, she's pretty particular. Um, she's pretty particular. I guess that's the best word. Okay. How about the idea that that you might be feeling a tad bit of a negative core belief that you're not good enough, and that she brings out in you a feeling that you you are good enough. Um, I don't know about about that one. That maybe is a little bit harder for me to kind of differentiate if it applies or not. Okay, a little, little, little hard to know, and uh, I guess I'm putting putting you on the spot with this, and just to make the point that that these dynamics are not always horrible. It's just that you don't want the tables to turn on you. That's the point. Right. And of course, gotcha. everyone wants to be the Superman or the knight in charming, shining armor, and and get that person out of financial mess or get that person out of uh, depression and so on and so forth. And you just want to make sure that whatever you're giving is going to be received and used well and will not um, create a system of, I call it a system of vampiring, okay, or a sister yeah. system of obligation where uh, now she feels obliged to be with you because she would be embarrassed to uh, not be with you after all the good that you have done. So tell right. me, I, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that applies, fortunately, in a, in a great in a great way. Especially uh, over the past um, several months, we really decided to, you know, kind of go head on at our different um, kind of childhood upbringing issues okay. and couples therapy, like I mentioned, and mm-hmm. and really helping each other in different ways. And I feel like overall, 
it is relatively energetically balanced in the relationship. Okay. Um, and, and I don't think any of either of us are staying in it at all for, um, you know, any sort of, uh, you know, reason other than we're have, experiencing a lot of self growth. We love each other. We're getting a kick out of, you know, doing okay. this, you know, together and each other's personalities and enjoy the same types of things. Okay. So this is a win-win situation. It sounds like for you. Yeah, I, I I think so. I like I said, I think the thing that I battle with is almost more like the cultural perception okay. um, that like family mm -hmm. and people have because you know family members don't necessarily see you or know the person well enough to understand that value um, mm -hmm. that that person has in all these different areas and venues of life. Okay, and they you know I kind of come from a more like materialistic family where it's like you know what and you know what job are you what job are you working how much are you making you know. Not not as directly as that, but okay. sort of, you know. Okay. And if you're materialistically lacking, you know what what's wrong with you. So, are your parents or is your family questioning you about why you with her? She doesn't make as much as you, or why you with her? You're supporting her. Is that what's coming up? Yes. Okay, and then then and that's then, hurtful. You know. Yeah, of course it's hurtful. Because like you said, nobody really knows the inside story, okay? And right. so so maybe when I thought about this topic, I, I was really thinking about the imbalanced situations, and you're bringing up a more balanced situation. And again, money's not the only thing people bring into a relationship. Certainly people bring in a value, People bring in uh, their 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 love, their creativity, their uh, helpfulness, their emotional support, and on and on and on. So, if you were to see it through that lens, what do you feel that she's bringing to the table? Um, definitely emotional support. Okay. Um, uh, she's a very intelligent and entertaining person to be around. Extremely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very intelligent. Um, she's helpful to, to friends, to, to me, and in a, a myriad uh, of ways. And she's, okay. she's funny and a great, great person to have around. She's really introduced me and, and blossomed my spiritual part of my life. Okay. Um, very intellectual, uh, research heavy type of individual who's, who's super fun to uh, go down the rabbit hole, different topics with. And, and why is she in distress or why was she in distress? I, I, you know, she has her own anxieties and 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 an underlying kind of self worth um, okay. issue that I think blocks her um, from doing much. Like she'll sleep in, you know, till noon if she can during the day. She okay. almost like she's not not motivated to. And she she has an online presence, and she's a she's an animal activist online, and mm -hmm. and does some things in in you know in person too. So. I, I guess it's um, she, she just because she does, because she just seems to need other people to get things accomplished. Okay. And she doesn't really stand on her own two feet either financially, or she needs someone to to you know store her things at their place, or she needs someone to pick her up from here or there. Where okay. you know, to be okay. like, you know, be self sufficient. That's the healthier and higher self esteem boosting type of. So, so let me let me ask you another challenging question. What if she decided to grow and expand and become financially independent, and she started making money and became motivated? What do you think that would do to the dynamic? In other words, what if she didn't need you as much? What do you think that would do to the dynamics of the relationship? Uh, to me, I, I I would welcome that, and okay. I I would like that I would like that type of balance, uh, and not to be like financially relied on. I feel like I'm kind of trapped when it comes to like my financial decisions mm -hmm. because um, because she's a factor. She's not very needy financially though, so I should point that out that mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know she does she does work enough to to sort of you know kind of make her make her way with her own things. Okay. Um, so I've always thought that it would be a healthy thing to eliminate, like the financial imbalance. She's that that's just not going to happen. There's enough of a disparity where that's not necessarily going to so, happen. But 
So, so within this relationship, there's room for growth. So in other words, you're not invested in her being stuck. You're not necessarily invested in her uh, being um, not, not growing as quickly as maybe you've grown. So you're not invested in that. You're open to, to her becoming the best of who she can be. And, and you think that that's not going to tilt the relationship in such a way that you're, you're going to lose out on feeling like you're the, the knight in shining armor and so on. So, so what, what if you're not the knight in shining armor? What if you're just a great partner? Would you be okay with that? I, I think I would love that. I've kind of been the knight in shining armor, you know, through this relationship in, in that regard, in the financial regard. She's also okay. been a savior for me in, in kind of emotional mm-hmm. ways and, mm-hmm. and family dynamic ways. Um, and in my previous relationship was a very long one, and I, I was in the same position then, too. So I really felt like I, in that previous relationship, started as we were pretty much equals, and then it kind of shifted. But I really, I really want to experience that um, type of dynamic where that's not as much of a of a factor, and in, and okay. I don't feel it doesn't creep into my head, you know, that I'm maybe being used or something. Like being raised by a narcissistic mom, where I just eventually, you know, felt used. So you know, you know emotion. the difference. So in your case, it sounds like there's enough of a healthy balance and enough of a capacity within the relationship for growth and it's not going to threaten you if she expands so i'm, I'm going to go into the other end of the spectrum where the balance is not so great and talk about that because there are reasons people fall into the damsel in distress syndrome and instead of creating a growth environment they create something else and I'll, I'll get into that so Michael thank you so much for calling in and of course if you have any uh, questions or you want a free copy of the book by the way everyone can have a free copy of my PDF book be the cause healing human disconnect and uh, you're all welcome to call for free consultations we have a beautiful team so I'm going to go into some poorer dynamics. Thank you for sharing and for giving another uh, uh, um, sigh to the damsel in distress and how sometimes it can create for a win-win. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. I really appreciate your time and your input that uh, is honestly kind of heart- heartwarming and, and uh, helps me you know, see the bigger picture as a more positive one. So I appreciate that. You're very, very welcome. Okay. So it doesn't always work out the way Michael is describing. And so I want to go back into those nine reasons why men fall for damsels in distress. And this is a an article by Sarjana Singh. And she says that uh, she wants to make it perfectly clear that this article is not aimed to degrade any gender. So yes, this could be a a dame or a damsel. This is based on specific dating patterns. And what she's been noticing is that these people who attract or want to get into the dynamics, all of them become close to him by telling, this starts with a sob story, okay, and how the world has been unfair to them. So that's really the, um, the, 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 the first hook in. And then and then what happens is that a certain kind of a tr- uh, individual be, will be attracted to these women or men in distress. And what will happen is that um, they will go down the rabbit hole because it, there are benefits involved. And let me, let me go back into those benefits. So what are the benefits to, let's just keep it with the damsel, just for simplicity's sake. So the men might think that they they feel more like a man. So there's nothing uh, 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 that feels better than to be needed, especially a man likes to be, loves to be needed. And these women who need your help will make you feel like a man. Damsels in distress are easily approachable. Well, of course they're easily approachable because they're waiting for you to come and rescue them. So rather than having the challenge of of, um, winning them over, they're easily won over. Just help them and 
you can win them over. Maybe not that easy, but in general, help will go a long way. Guys think of so many strategies and pickup lines before approaching a girl or a woman. They will be thinking, uh, how's my style? Will we hit it off? Will, will they think that I'm good, good enough or good looking enough or powerful enough? So this takes the struggle out of it. So, um, so, th so the guy can feel more at ease and more able to take the risk to ask the woman out, knowing, of course, that she's on the receiving end and on the needing end. So then there's the other aspect, favor for a favor. Men have the tendency to expect things from women in return for their security. So when a guy's there all the time to listen to a girl's tragedy, then he will expect something in return. And we all know what that number one thing is, right? And that's expecting it pretty quickly. Damsels in distress are very easy to please. They survive on sympathy and they will welcome any and every person who offers uh, to satisfy needs and always there to help them. So these are pretty um, powerful reasons a man will get involved with a damsel in distress. And again, this is a way that the guy will feel that if he's not good enough, he can automatically earn points by boosting their, uh, their own ego through the rescue mission. Now he's invincible and king of the world, and he doesn't have to do much to really, really please, because she might be so satisfied with, 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 with pretty much any gesture of help. So let, let's go back to the mind map and see what the Freud is going on and how all of this gets set up. So we've got aspects of the dependent personality, which is the damsel in distress. And then we've got aspects of the, the man who may think that he needs to um, boost his ego, boost his self-esteem, and what better boost is there than a woman who thinks he's absolutely uh, fantastic. And so the contrast is very appealing. So here he doesn't have to do all that much, and if he delivers some, then she'll make him king, and he'll be up on a pedestal. Men get a sense of authority that can make the woman's decision uh, can get a sense of authority so that he might feel as though he's secured in his position and he doesn't have to worry that he's at emotional risk. So if we mind map this and throw it up on panel number one, we could see that panel one, which represents wounds of childhood, I'll go into the five that I emphasize, and they're spoken about in my book, Be the Cause, Healing Human Disconnect, and these five are, five are physical abuse, emotional verbal abuse, neglect, um, smothering, and sexual abuse. So the setup to being this knight in shining armor might be, for example, a family of origin that ignored you. So if you were ignored or you were put down, then you want to take charge. You want to be made whole. You want to feel like you're important. If you've been made to feel unworthy, unimportant, um, unseeable, then this might be a setup for you to enter into the dynamics. So let's look at the other side of the coin. So if you're a woman who's been dependent, if you're a woman who has on some level maybe even been a little bit, bit spoiled or controlled by the family, you might be used to the power differential. If you've been exploited, then maybe you are used to a power differential. And so you'll be attracted to somebody that you can put up on the pedestal. Now, I want to talk about some downsides to this because I'm, I'm always a person that believes in people <laughs> and, and, and who they are as opposed to the situation they're in because we all go through situations. We might be up, we might be down, and we want to make sure that whatever relationship we enter is sustainable and not just circumstantial. 
So let's talk about the circumstances and the environments and how that might change and what would happen. So let's say that the damsel becomes strong. Let's say uh, 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 Miss Damsel goes back to school and gets a great education and she becomes powerful and she starts earning money and she starts earning more money than her rescuer. Wow, well, what do you think can happen with this particular dynamic? It can topple the seesaw. So now, Mr. In Control might feel out of control, unlike Michael, who welcomes the idea of his damsel growing and financially benefiting and kicking in more into the relationship. There are certain people who might feel threatened by that. Okay, so that might be one way that this fallout can occur. The other thing is that um, what if the damsel gets so strong that she becomes unattracted to the rescuer because now she's her own person and that's not her need anymore. And she doesn't like the fact that he's ordering her around or controlling her or in possession of the uh, uh, control of controlling the bank account, well, this will definitely uh, challenge the relationship. So what, what, I'm, what I'm really asking you to all do is to take off the rose-colored glasses and to see that these dynamics can change and therefore what is it going to do to the relationship. So I want to go into what is the foundational of a good relationship. And I'm going to refer to my panel number seven to describe this. And panel number seven is, is a metaphor for interconnection, for synergy. So as long as the relationship is growth producing, as long as the relationship is bringing you light, is making you a better person and your partner a better person, you're probably in the right relationship. If you're in a relationship where you're feeling vampired, even though you might think that you're the king or the knight or the, uh, the, 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 the prince charming rescuer, there might come a point where this light that you're giving is being absorbed by the other and being used by the other to better him or herself. And then at a certain point, there's no more synergy. There is a completion of that person's, um, let's call it, that person might then feel that they have properly gone through the stage of separation and individuation, and they've now grown up. And so now you're no longer dynamically their lover. They've outgrown the parent that you were to them, and now they're ready to find a partner. And these are some of the downsides of these kinds of relationships. So please, this is a call-in show, and please feel free to call in. The number is 323-843-2826. And of course, I've counseled people who love damsels in distress, and it's not always a happy ending. And there are aspects to the relationship that are very challenging, because sometimes what happens in the process is people get angry and lose respect for each other. So the damsel might get really angry and feel c controlled, and she might start feeling resentful that she has to do all this work for the other person just because that person is paying the bills. On the other hand, that other person might get really angry because the the, their partner is sleeping in late or their partner is not bringing enough money uh, uh, to the household or dynamics change and he loses his job and now he needs her to be the more powerful money earner. So again, think about it. Partners, their character, their ethics, their morals versus circumstances. And circumstances do change. So uh, there's a lot that we've spoken about in terms of what is a narcissist? What are narcissistic traits? How is narcissism formed? This seems to be a big topic and an epidemic and some uh, a dynamic that people seek out help for. And so basically, a narcissistic dynamic is a system 
gone wrong. And the system that goes wrong starts at the causal level, starts with the blueprint, mom, dad, culture, family of origin, and multi-generations of people. And this system gone wrong can go wrong in oh so many ways. One way it can go wrong is that the person is controlled and smothered. And they get into this dynamic with their parents. And so as a result of it, they could, for example, become identified with being similar to their parents and, and copycatting this blueprint and becoming the controller and the smotherer and then looking for people to control and smother. On the other hand, it could come from deprivation. So if this person does not have uh, parents that offer uh, support and un unconditional love, if the person feels that they're rewarded for what they do, not for who they are, then they get the idea that they have to be this knight in shi shining armor because they have to do a lot in order to earn the love. Love is not just a free commodity. Love is something that actually doesn't quite exist, but they can feel some sense of reward if they, they behave by giving and doing and bending over backward. And, 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 and it doesn't end well all the time. Unlike uh, Michael's story, it just doesn't end well. So I want to talk about some other goodies and benefits to being this knight in shining armor. Uh, men think that this is how it's supposed to be thanks to movies. We've all seen Snow White and Superman, and there's always a superhero. And there's always that damsel in distress that needs to be rescued. And so it's pretty cultural. So there's no surprise that we're set up to reenact this. Weakness is men's biggest weakness. Men like to fix things, solve problems, make the person suffering from that problem go away. How sweet it would be if they can fix everything and be the hero. The problem is, is that they might be going down a very bad rabbit hole because they might be induced to fix someone who needs to fix themselves. How about that for a novel concept? We all need support. We all need uh, other people to believe in us. However, when the scale tips to the point where one is giving, 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 and the other one is taking, 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 and then there are more tragedies and more uh, chaos and more things to solve, and the person is just one chaotic hot mess, well, um, then there's plenty of work to do for the, the Prince Charming, isn't, isn't there? But it's not going to make for a very, very happy, balanced relationship. So again, uh, a helpless woman is a woman that some men cannot resist. And so that's part of the problem. So I want to talk about how to rescue yourself from your need to rescue others. And here's a wonderful article by Mary Lamia, PhD, and Marilyn Krager, PhD. And they talk about the white knight who rescues the damsel in distress, falls in love, and saves the day. Real-life white knights are men and women who enter into uh, da with damaged and vulnerable partners. And I want to say that again, damaged, vulnerable partners, you know, the broken wingers, hoping that love will transform their partner's behaviors or lives a relationship pattern that seldom leads to a storybook ending. White knights can be any age, any race, anybody, any, any, uh, any sex, and any socioeconomic status. It doesn't mean that a white knight is re necessarily a millionaire. A uh, white knight can be the dynamics of that person who wants to save and needs to rescue and will focus on saving as a goal and a reward. So again, this is a call-in show, everyone. So please feel free to call in. That number is 323-843-2826. And let's talk about 
you and your dynamics and uh, if you have been in a relationship where you're the knight in shining armor, I want to hear if this was a happy ending or maybe at the end of the day you weren't too happy with the situation. I want to hear about uh, uh, women from women and men who have been needy and broken and entering into a relationship in order to be saved and I want to hear what happens when you get strong. What happens when you find your way and you don't, quote, need that person anymore? So this article talks about um, what kind of chaos needs rescuing. We all know that the kind of chaos that needs rescuing could be anything. It could be rescuing the person from an abusive relationship. Now think about that. If that person's in an abusive relationship, then that person probably has some mental health growth to do. That person has to heal from being inclined to be in an abusive relationship. So by pairing up with such a person, you can't just douse that person with unconditional love and think that love will save the day. So why would someone believe this? Well, they would believe it because they don't understand that behind this damsel in distress is a bunch of emotional baggage. Okay, so if we go back to panel number one, this damsel in distress might come from an abusive family, which is why she's probably having the tendency to repeat the pattern and get in, involved in, a, in an abusive uh, uh, relationship. This damsel in distress might have some pretty horrid negative core beliefs such as I'm not good enough or I'm not smart or I'm, uh, I'm ugly. And so therefore she might sell herself short in life and she might pair up with you and you, you might be thinking, wow, I must be really, really special. And it's not a sign necessarily that you're that special. It's just a sign that she needs you right now. And her needing you is not a sign that she loves you. So let me say that again. Just because somebody needs somebody doesn't mean that they love someone. And thank you for calling in. And your name is? Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for calling in. And where are you calling from? Portland, Oregon. Okay. And, and how do you relate to this? particular topic? Uh, well, it's uh, pretty much describing my last relationship. Okay, okay. Were you <laughs> the damsel in distress? I was the damsel in distress. You were, okay. Okay, what were you going through at the time? I was unemployed. I was living with my mom. Living with her was a living hell, and I couldn't figure out how to get away from her yeah and so along came prince charming right and so was he a good guy uh um uh, i don't know i don't i don't i i, I mean i don't want to call him a bad guy mm -hmm. but i i'll just say that i read a book called a wolf in sheep's clothing Mm. And he was guilty of just about everything in that book. <laughs> okay, well, that's a, was, that's a every, hint right there, right? Okay, so what yeah. what was he, what was the what he first presented? Was he showing up as the wolf, or was he? I guess he was showing up as the sheep, right? Oh, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. a sheep. Definitely okay. very eager to listen. He mm -hmm. he was seemed like such a good listener, wanted yeah. to hear about all of my problems, never tired of hearing about them. And, um, you know, I just bought your book. I'm on the third chapter and <laughs> I totally recognize that, you know, I, why I was the damsel, why I, it, 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 our relationship was the seven miserable years. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, wow. I grew in my career and, uh, he tried to sabotage it and it wasn't until I was financially stable enough to leave it. And it, and it, it, it's kind of like what you were saying earlier. As soon as I didn't need it anymore, it, it was like I, the pull to stay was no longer there. 
Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being so honest because uh, a lot of uh, damsels in distress want to pretend like they're not damsels in distress, that they're, they're really there because they love the guy and that they're bringing it to the table and, and so on and so forth. And it's so interesting because you recognize that you were in distress and you were not doing well in your uh, family of origin and you had to get the heck out of there. And so what are you supposed to do? You, you, you got a creative idea and what do you think it w was in it for him? Oh, it was definitely an, an ego boost for him. Mm -hmm. um, I just like you were saying, I put him up on a pedestal. I mm -hmm. helped him um, grow in his. Uh, I I, I, um, I I definitely put all put my uh, needs aside and, and put all my energy into helping him expand his career. Okay, and um, so I would say a big ego boost for him. So he was on top in terms of the, the seesaw of life. He was, he was on top and you were below, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I remember one, one person who was in this dynamics with a woman um, said, I picked her because she works for me. Yes. Uh, that was definitely, I, at the end of the relationship, I felt like everything had been sucked out of me mm -hmm. and that I was just this empty, hollow shell. And if I didn't get out of there, I didn't know what, I just didn't, I didn't even want the, that life anymore. So, and so I just decided to run. Well, 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 good for you. And, and the, the. The fact that you're reading my book tells me that you know a little bit about negative core beliefs, a little bit about narcissism, the system gone wrong. And so he was supplying his ego through your weakness. And this is not a healthy dynamic, as you know. And so as you grew stronger, uh, instead of growing closer together, you you decided that you'd no longer, you'd, you'd been in enough hostage situations, right? You were in a hostage situation with your family of origin, and now you were in a relationship where you felt that you had to be in this relationship. When did the wolf show up, by the way? Um, really, co really covert stuff, a lot of sabotage uh, mm -hmm. of my goals. Um, I, I, uh, just, um, like I said, with my career, uh, just a lot of, of discouragement in, in, yes. in my, uh, career expansion. Yes. Uh, I tried to quit smoking mm -hmm. and he put two cigarettes out so that I would find them in the first morning that I tried to quit. Boy, if um, that's just, not, <laughs> I was just going to say, if that's not a metaphor for depend, 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 I don't know what is, right? Literally. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, we were addicted to smoking together, and yeah. it it was a really, it was really toxic and bad. And he was he became really manipulative. He was he started lying about just every, over over nothing. Uh, we he bought a house, and um, the movers helped us move. And they asked uh, he they asked him how much the house was and he exaggerated by like 15 grand for no reason why mm -hmm, lie mm -hmm, he just mm -hmm. little, just he just started lying about everything um he, he also started trying to rescue other people mm -hmm. um really de really really damaging people people mm -hmm. that um the one of them was accused he was accused and arrested for molesting his kids and he was and trying he, to rescue him he tried to rescue him. He put him up in a hotel when he because he got kicked out of his house with mm -hmm. his wife. He put it. He paid for the hotel. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. brought him food. He took his side. And I, you know, I don't know if the guy was guilty or not, but he was just yeah. someone in distress, and he he went for it. So now that you've read chapter three, panel three of my book, which is about identifying negative core beliefs, what do you think that? What do you think your negative core belief is or was or? What do you think your core belief that you're working on is? Well, um, I haven't started chap chapter three. I'm actually a okay. little bit afraid. Oh, okay. uh, but I've got the, the double whammy with, with, with both parents. Mm -hmm. um, father not protecting and nurturing mother, mother not nurturing me. 
Um, okay. I, I think the 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 hard the one that I think among the other among everything that I think I'm trying to figure out is the 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 hole in the soul about the disconnect with mom. Okay. Is is the is the biggest one? I yes. she used to describe she described breastfeeding me as a very irritating experience that she could barely stand it, and I can almost feel it in my bones that irritation that she described in 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 breastfeeding me. And she told me that when I used to act up, she would just put me in my crib and and leave me there until I oh shut God. up. Yeah. And then she would come back and find that I took all my clothes off and was fast asleep. And she just said, you took your clothes off just to piss me off. You know, she just, she, I think she was a mean mommy. <laughs> you think, right? Okay, so here yeah. you go. You go with this, you go into this relationship and he's the sheep and he seems nourishing and nurturing. And that's exactly what you need. You're... Your cup is empty on that end, that's for sure, coming out of a, a, a family like this. And so, wow, uh, you're about to drink some good milk. This guy's really offering it up, right? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then you're, exactly. and then you're feeling nourished and you find your strength and you've got some vitamins running through your system. And then what? Then what happens? And it, 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 the, the milk went sour. <laughs> Good. <laughs> go on with Good the metaphor. Analogy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, okay. the, the milk just went sour. He, he, uh, no, he just suddenly no longer interested in listening to me, uh, and and so that um, support that I we initially signed up for was just evaporated, and I started to feel very alone, very mm-hmm. isolated. Uh, we moved to Texas, and so none of my people were around me to go to, to be get support from. So I was very um, isolated, and the more isolated I became, the, the less supportive he became. It almost seemed like he was taking satisfaction in the destruction of my psyche. And this is a <laughs> great, I, great example of, of the narcissistic abuse. You first give him a loaf and then you end up with crumbs. And as you said, the milk sours, right? And then there's that that horrible sense of what people who are in domestic violence uh, situations go through. They become isolated because the favorite ploy of the controller is to cut off support so they could do with you anything that you want, anything that you want. And so what do you think he was punishing you for as you grew and as you you started noticing that maybe you weren't quite wanting to spend the rest of your life with this knight in shining armor? Well, I, w- I would definitely say that I, I wasn't exactly a prime picture of a damsel. I definitely became venomous myself, mm-hmm. um, and I would definitely um, get triggered uh, by him, and I would just lay into him. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that he definitely, you know, had a, had a big grudge against me for those, those words that I slung at him quite venomously like I'll, I'll admit they were was, I, I would never let anyone speak to me like that um, the way you spoke to him so, you mean the way you spoke to him yeah I, I, that pedestal that I put him on I tore it down yeah, and that's <laughs> it the, became very, and that's, very toxic in the end yeah and thank you for bringing that up because see when a relationship is split like that Uh, The pedestal thing, I remember a wonderful supervisor of mine who I was quite afraid of because I really put her up on a pedestal. She was so intelligent, and I finally had the courage to say, you know, I'm really scared of you. I'm really scared of asking questions. And she said, why? I said, because, you know, I'm really, (laughs) I've really put you up on a pedestal. And she said, I I'm the one that should be afraid. And I looked at her quite confused. Why would you want to be afraid of me? And she said, because I stand to be knocked off the pedestal. 
and it was a great supervisory moment for me. I really learned a lot from that one comment. And that's the problem with these relationship dynamics, right? The duck moves, yeah. the sheep turns into a wolf, and the wolf turns into a sheep. And sometimes we have money, sometimes we don't have money, sometimes we have good looks, sometimes we don't have good looks. I'm talking about all these narcissistic supplies. So what's supposed to sustain us, right? What's supposed right. to sustain us? And so- I do I know. <laughs> right. So, okay. So that that's the that's the real deal. The real conversation is so. What is at the at the heart of what is at the core of a healthy relationship? And one of the definitions I love about the word love is love is about caring and sharing. And I want to add to that that love is about being in the favor of a person's psycho spiritual growth. So if I really love you, I'm interested in your growing. And your growth is not going to be uh, at my expense, nor, uh, nor is my growth going to be at your expense. And so again, back to panel seven, which is actually a, 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 a richer description of, of what I use for my logo. It's interconnection, it's synergy, it's bringing out the light in another person. So, um, so what happened to that relationship? Give me the, the conclusion. Was it um, the story? But I'm, I'm already knowing it's not the storybook happy happy ending, right? You didn't fade out into the sunset, did you? Oh no, definitely oh, no. not. I, I would I, I would say that I was very disillusioned at the end, mm -hmm. and his behavior became. I, it got to a point where I felt like I didn't even recognize him anymore. Yes. And um, I, I actually felt afraid of him once I realized that I didn't really know him. Okay. And I was afraid that if I actually told him I was going to leave, that he might have like a psychotic break and yeah. try to kill me. Yeah. And I don't know if that's real, but I just felt afraid of that. And so I just uh, grabbed my stuff and my dog and put it all in my car and I took off. Did and you I take went, off with a when, friend in California? Did you take off when he wasn't home, or did you challenge him and leave when he was around? No, I left when he after he went for work. I packed my car and left while he was gone. Smart woman, smart woman. So you don't want to tick off a controlling, um, internally weak human being who depends on you to put him up on a pedestal and that was the smartest thing you you could do is leave when he's not around and basically pull a cold turkey on him because uh, if there's a, a an area where he can still control you and manipulate you he will find it by your leaving and severing the contact did you guys connect afterwards or was that pretty much it you know um, it I Several several weeks later, um, because the context of, of the absence, because I, w I, was, um, I was kind of gathering my things, and when he asked me, you know, what are you up to, I just told him, oh, I'm taking a road trip. And so I did kind of have a, a pre-context there of why, yes. why, Vanessa, do you have this in a box? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, Smart uh, thinking, yes. Why is your yes. luggage out, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so um, initially, he just thought that I was going on a road trip to go visit my family in California. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was in California, I posted on Facebook asking for any uh, friends in HR that I might have to judge my resume for me. And his mom saw that and contacted him. And mm -hmm. um, I guess he had to go to counseling. He said that he had a mental breakdown when he realized I wasn't coming back. Yeah. And I felt I felt I felt bad for him for that, but at the same at the same time I, I was so relieved to be too far away to be um, reached. And and you know, if we're really interested in everyone's psycho spiritual growth, we can put it in a different way that people's breakdowns are sometimes setups for breakthroughs. So maybe he needed to break down the old system of narcissism 
and uh, get get off of that plan and face his negative core beliefs and uh, start therapy so that he can understand uh, ultimately where his valuelessness came from. And so perhaps you were a great catalyst for his work and he was a great catalyst for your work, uh, for your work. And so maybe now the two of you are in some way better off because you had that that horrible learning experience. So I know we're just about out of ta time and um, please feel free to contact me at the clinic. Okay, I really appreciate you sharing the story and I wanted to shrink the tune that I chose for tonight. And, uh, and again, thank you for your honesty and for sharing. Thank you, Dr. Judy. I really appreciate being able to speak with you and I'll finish reading your book. Okay. And I'll probably, I do plan to contact your clinic. Thank you so much. Okay, my, my pleasure. And pay the book forward. It's free and just whoever you think would benefit, just send them a copy. I will, well, I'm sending some as Christmas gifts. <laughs> oh, that's really, really, really nice. Okay. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You, and you're welcome. Good night. Good night. So the song here is Fontella Bass, Rescue Me. Jeez, it was such an obvious, I thought, I'm going to shrink this song. Rescue me, take me in your arms. Rescue me, I want your tender charm because I'm lonely and I'm blue. I need you and your love too. Come on and rescue me. So you could see the neediness. This person is the damsel in distress. Come on, baby, rescue me. Come on. I need you by my side. Can't you see that I'm lonely? So who could resist this woman? All that person has to do is step in and rescue and that person will be greatly appreciated. A lot of this song repeats and repeats a lot about the rescue me. I want your tender charm. And charm is an operative word because I think on some level this song is saying charm because they know that the real deal is not not there. It's They need the charm even if it's temporary. They need that sheep in, you know, the sheep part, not the wolf part. Take me, baby. Hold me, baby. Love me, baby. Can't you see I need you, baby? So this person doesn't have much of a sense of self. They need that other person to esteem them and, and rescue them. Come on, baby. Be my man. There it is. Make you feel like a man. Hmm. Take me, baby. Love me, baby. Need me, baby. Can't you see that I'm lonely? And that person can step in and fill the hole in the soul and uh, elevate and feel like the knight in shining armor. So please feel free to contact us and get a free PDF of the book. We have a beautiful team of people and we also have the mind map video series that you could purchase. And I welcome people to request a free consultation and uh, I'll be happy to um, give you a description of how we can take you through this journey of, of bad encoding, dismantling the bad encoding, and then recoding you into health. Thank you for listening. Good night, everyone.